Hello, everybody. Welcome along to pre-match build-up here on the Rangers Rabble. I just want to start with a disclaimer. Um, after last night's phone-in, I may have slightly overindulged in a little bit of the bad juice. So I'm feeling a little wee bit tender this morning. So yeah, hello, welcome. I hope you're all well. Um, I think I'm going to struggle this morning. I am not going to lie. I'm joined by Graham. Graham, how are you? I'm all good, mate. I'm excited for the season to kick off eventually. Uh, so hopefully we'll be celebrating a win and start the season. Not hopefully. We will be celebrating a win. We will be celebrating a win. Um, now, Mark's joining us as well. Um, now, Mark's got his own reasons, I think, for feeling a bit bad. I was, I'm, I'm trying to think of something my brain has. Um, <laughs> it's too much alcohol or even before. That's a problem. Too much, far too much alcohol. But Martin, I, you caught that dreaded COVID. Managed to dodge it for two and a half years. It eventually got me. I think it gets his own end. But I, I was, I was bad for about three or four days. Yeah. But I'm on a mend. I'm on a mend. You're on a mend. Um, <laughs> Tony, Martin looks 25 years older than he did on last night. I feel 25 years older, <laughs> Tony. I'm not gonna lie to you. I feel, I feel terrible. Um, who have we got in the comments? Aldo, Nicholas, hello. Um, who else have we got? We've got Mel, super excited um, for today. Heather, good friend of the show, buzzing at McLaughlin's and goals. I hate that stupid pitch, but let's hope I win and no injury. So, yeah, let's just jump straight into the start of 11, shall we? Um, I, I can't remember who called this, but somebody called this exact team. So, it's McLaughlin, Tav, Goldson, Suter, Barisic, Kamara, Lundstrom, Lawrence, Wright, Kent, and Kolak. Um, what's your thoughts, Mark, on that start of 11? I think probably the, the, the big the big decision and the big ones, McLaughlin and goals. I think that pretty much the rest of the team picks itself almost um with with the form in pre season. But I think the McLaughlin starting's a big one in it. I think that's a that's a big talking point. So he's obviously went for it. Um and it looks like he is now he is now the number one goalkeeper. Um which I think suits the way he wants to play. Play the ball at his feet. We're going to have hundreds of possession, so you're as well having a relatively speaking another another outfield player and a, as a goalie. So, I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense to pretty much most people. Obviously, McGregor, club legend. Um, we can we can sit here and talk about how good he's been over the years, but I think there comes a time where you kind of maybe need. I mean, you kind of say to yourself, look, bodies, bodies know what it used to be. Um, reactions maybe knows what it used to be. And let's face it, the, the, the modern game's moved on now. If you're not good with a your feet as a goalkeeper, then you're probably you're probably not going to go to the higher the higher reaches of the game. Does that then, Graham, suggest that it's going to be McLaughlin and goals from now on? Or is it just, do you think it'll be a case that Gio will pick the goalkeeper that he thinks suits the game that we're playing. I think, uh, as Ardo's just said in the comments there, I think McLaughlin will be the, the league goalkeeper and McGregor will play the, the European games and the cup games, I think. I don't think it's uh, a good decision to constantly swap because we need a wee bit of consistency. So I think that's the best way. And I think that's what we, a lot of the top clubs do now. They always have a European goalkeeper and a cup goalkeeper and then one for the main league. And I think that kind of suits us because McGregor's form, as we all said last year, was better in Europe. So hopefully he can continue that. And then McLaughlin gives us that when we're, uh, what does Mark was saying there, it's an extra player. We can play out for the back a wee bit better. So I think it makes sense. And like the, the start line-up we were saying there, I think uh, everyone is in the group chat all predicted that. I think the only contention in the group chat was maybe Sands if he wasn't trusting Suter on that pitch. So it shows we, we, we predicted the team right. Well, for, for once, um, CGM is saying, like, I, um, look, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to turn this preview into uh, McLaughlin versus McGregor, but um, I don't see the point in even having McGregor on the bench. If McLaughlin is number one, then McCrory should be on the bench, Mark. Look, if you're going to, if you're going to play that game, is McGregor a better goalkeeper than McCrory? So the bottom line is yes. So he's got to go on the bench. You put your next best goalkeeper on the bench. You don't put your third best goalkeeper on the bench and leave your second best goalkeeper 
uh, in the stands. So it doesn't make any sense. I understand what you're saying, that if that's the case and you're trying to bring it through and try to bring bring McCrory through and, and give him more game time, but you need to play your strengths. Your strengths are, I mean, the two of them, there's not a lot in uh, McGregor McLaughlin, even though McGregor's slipping slightly, but as I said, he's still better than McCrory as far as I'm concerned, so you put McGregor as your, as your number two, and if you can, as I said, between the two, there's no that much, but as I say, you need to put, pick your strongest team and pick your strongest bench. Simple as that. And I suppose, Graham, <clears throat> this is McLaugh- this is McLaughlin's chance. This is he's been, he's been given. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm really struggling. He's been given the, the number one jersey for the first league game of the season. So it's up to McLaughlin to go out there and go right. This is my jersey now. This this is it. This is my position. Ah, uh, of course, he's been given the chance. So it's now he's, he's got to take it and make himself undroppable. So. Um, uh, so you say it showed uh, some good games like in Celtic semi final and stuff like that, and in the, the Scottish Cup final. So he's got recent form. Uh, obviously, there's been a long break in between, but if he looks back at the performances and hopefully continues that, then as like I said, I think he will be the league goalkeeper, uh, and it should benefit his playing out for the back. Now, Suter, uh, well, uh, the, the, the defence Tav Goldson, Suter, and Barisic, Graham. Tav, Goldson and Barisic, obviously I, I don't think there was any other people going to ever start in those positions. The big chat was, will it be Suter, will it be Sands, will it be King, who will it be? And obviously Gio's went for Suter. Right call for you? Uh, I'd have liked to have seen Davis if he was fit, but obviously he's not going on the bench, so that's a wee slight worry. But uh, I think Suter knows the game, he knows Livingston. It's just like we've always said, it's that pitch and his knees. Uh, so that's the worry, but uh, I think that's the strongest side, could, the strongest defence. Sorry, I could have picked. So I'm, I'm overall I'm delighted with it. Well, Mark Heather sends Suter on this pitch. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure if you probably look back through his Hearts days, Suter played on these pitches. We can, I don't think we can begin into this season going, hey, well we've brought in these three players, but they can't play on these terrible pitches. They have to be able to play on them. I think that. Um... Professional footballers need to be able to play in anything, simple as that. And I think that with sports science and physios and all sorts of doctors, and hundred percent think that if it wasn't it possible or wasn't able to play in these pitches, or if they had any sort of a fear, they wouldn't play. So they're obviously thinking to, uh, he is fit enough to play in a pitch. He's strong enough to play in this pitch. He's played in this pitch before, so. I mean, we, we bought him to come and play football. Well, we never bought yeah. him. We brought him in for free, but we, we brought him on to play football. He's a professional footballer. Go and play football. Something like that. Yeah. No matter what you're playing on. Can I just say, there's a lot of Iron Brew chat in the comments, right? I, I want to make this very, very clear. Now, everybody that watches this knows my thoughts about certain foods and stuff, right? Iron Brew is bogging. It is 100% Totally and utterly disgustingly bogging, right? So I will not be drinking any Iron Brew. Diet Coke, Sprite, whatever. Okay, I'll drink that. Iron Brew is absolutely bogging. Oh, disgusting. Um, Jack's on the benchmark. Um, We've got Kamara, Lundstrom and Lawrence in the middle of the park. Are you surprised? Is it maybe a fitness issue with Jack? Or do you think that that Kamara, Lundstrom and Lawrence is the right midfield? I think that, that going for pre season, I mean they they have been playing form wise, they've been they've been the fittest and the they've, they've been doing it. So I think that he's picked it in form rather than rather than who is because obviously I, me personally would have Jack in there, but as I said, he's picked it in form, so you can't fault him and, and that shows that if you're good enough and you're showing it, then you're gonna get a jersey. So that's what you want a team. You want uh, you want everybody vying for, for places and slots, so for me, that's that's what it looks like he's done. They've done it. They've done it in uh, pre-season. They've obviously done it over the course uh, of, the, of the games that we've played. So he's, he's picked them. He's picked them in merit, as far as I'm concerned. Who does that that Jack role in midfield? Then Graham out of Kamara, Lundstrom, and Lawrence, or, or is it set up completely differently? I think it is set up a wee bit different because it's more a four-two-three-one. Where Lawrence kind of as the number ten. Uh, so it's kind of the two, two kind of eight sixes, if you want to call them that. So I think Lundstrom will cover the pitch with the way Jack would, and Kamara will be the more technical player, 
and I think it'll be a case of if one goes forward, one kind of sits and vice versa. So I think it is a wee bit different. Whereas when Jack used to play, it was kind of Davis, Jack, Kamara, so it was a more a, a three. So it is a wee bit different, I think, for today's lineup. Well, we've seen <clears throat> Graham, <clears throat> excuse me, in the past. Most of our play obviously comes from the fullbacks, from Tavin, from Bonner or Bassi or whoever it was, and that's where we create our most chances. Do you see with Lawrence in the team, if he is playing that kind of number 10 role, do you see his focus on more centrally, or do you think Gio will, will be able to mix it up better? I think it gives us the option to mix it up a wee bit better, and plus, if we go kind of central, that gives uh, Wright and Kent a wee bit more space, and then if you have the wing-backs kind of pushing on, uh, it kind of creates overloads, which is quite good. So I think we shouldn't be kind of penned in to one side as such anymore. It should be kind of more flexible right across the pitch. Well, <laughs> I'm just reading some of the comments. Um, I don't, do you know, I personally think that, that CGM doesn't actually like me very much. Um, I'm, ju- I, I'm just putting that out there. I'm just putting that out there. Tom Lawrence, Mark, I think he's one that we've all looked at. He's impressed in pre-season. Um <clears throat> I just I don't want us to put too much pressure on everything's going to go through Lawrence. Lawrence is going to be the creator. Lawrence is going to score the goals, and then he has one or two bad games, and it's oh my god, this Lawrence is so poor. He's, he's this, he's that. But I'm going to contradict myself and go: Is Lawrence going to be the key today? I think he's he's. We've seen him pre-season. I mean, we've not seen an awful lot of him. So let's just caveat what we're what we're about to say. Um, from pre-season, from uh, what we've seen, it looks like he's, he's definitely something different from what we've had. He's very much creative. He's, he, he likes a shot. Everything's about moving forward for him. Everything. Um, he's very, very rarely does he think about a back pass. Um, but it looks like he's going to be pivotal. But like Graham said as well, the, the this opens up the wings it opens up different patterns of play because usually it was just everybody worried about Ryan Kent, let's double up and Ryan Kent, let's double up and Ryan Kent. Yeah. And, and that's how we stop the creation. But now we've got Ryan Kent, and to be fair, Scott Wright's done well in the... Uh, you want to Scott Wright in a minute. <laughs> yeah, he's done well in the, in the pre-season. But I think that there's there's a different dynamic now for us moving forward. I think that we've got these the three slots behind the, the main striker... There's a lot of creativity there, and there's a lot for for opposition teams to worry about. Mm-hmm. So we're not just worrying about one, possibly two. Let's double up and one. So now they've got three players. Realistically, I'm probably thinking more when Matondo gets gets fat and gets playing. But there's three of them that they need to worry about now, which is which is a lot more difficult to try and double up. Depending on if you've got three players that you need to worry about, as well as i.e. Cholak and and um, and the buff, so it, it makes us much more potent moving forward. As I said, and and that gives us a natural width, but also gives us something in the middle of the park that's creative that can that can thread a pass through that can that can make something happen as well as his shots from distance are outstanding as well. So right. it definitely brings a, a probably a greater role uh, goal threat. Sorry. Um, from the likes of Aribo, because Aribo was a smashing player, but his goal to games ratio wasn't great, and he, and he could score a goal, but I think Lawrence is is very much, he'd be looking for 10 plus goals this season, maybe even more than that. So I think that moving forward, we're a, we're a, a big, big threat now, because of the people that we've brought in, and obviously that formation. So I think, can I go back to your original question? I think Lawrence is going to be massive, but I think that the big boy Tillman that they've brought in is quite a similar player, maybe no to a certain extent because he's still a young boy and and relatively unknown to us, but I think he's very, very, very much in that kind of mould. So if Lawrence slips out, then he can slip in and it should be seamless. And I think that's obviously what, what he's recruited for. Mm-hmm. This, this season, uh, uh, Aye, but he's, he's definitely recruited to to bring his own players in. Geo, that's that's obvious, and, and we, I think we will look at a completely different team. <clears throat> but Graham, that's an interesting point on Lawrence opening the game up for the likes of Wright and Kent. So, do you think Lawrence coming in, Graham, will, like Mark says, give Kent more freedom and maybe 
<laughs> give Kent the ability to boost his own numbers? I think so, and uh, when you kind of look at it that way, it, it could happen. So I think as long as we don't become predictable and kind of force it, as long as we kind of keep it, uh, what's the word to look for? Like mix it up, don't kind of force it all the time, the one side, mix it up so the, the opposition don't really know what way we're going. And then uh, once we get somebody in space out in the wing, you can do the quick switch and it gets them 1v1. So I think that's the way it's going to set up and I'm looking forward to seeing it. And also, as Mark says, Lawrence, he likes a shot out the box, outside the box. So that adds a threat as well. So that'll bring defenders out. You can maybe slip me through balls in for uh, right and Kent, but kind of cutting inside. So as, I definitely think we're, as a team, uh, I think we're going to have, be a bigger threat, uh, especially when we're facing like, packed defences. So I, I, I'm really looking forward to how it sets up. Well, M Family, Martin, it would be great if you could put the team on the scroll at the bottom for future pre-match build-up vids. M Family, um, which by the way, I love the band. I'm not going to lie to you. I did. I love the band M Family. Is M Family one? Was it M People? I can't remember. M People. Uh, M People it was. Um, I will, in future, I will do that. See, if you've got any suggestions that you would like to see, um, we're always open to suggestions, always open to getting better. And just on that, of course, if you're watching, <coughs> excuse me, uh, on YouTube, Please do like and subscribe. And if you fancy, if and if you want to go and watch back last night's um, phone in, you will see at the start why I'm going to ask you to join as a member. I'm not going to go through it all because well, why focus on the football today? But if you want to join as a member as well, you can. The links in the description, or I think there's a join button just under the channel. So yeah, please do. If you're first time here, please do like and subscribe. Um, it really helps the channel. Um, and likes really, really help the channel. Like that's what that's what shares it through the Facebook algorithm. Can't even say that word. If you're watching on Facebook as well, please give us a follow, give us a, a, a like and, and comments as well. And of course on Twitter, a wee retweet and a like and a comment. Right, Scott Wright, Mark. I feel a wee bit sorry for Scott Wright. Um, I actually think there is a player there. And, and I actually, see if I, if I take your point about Lawrence coming in and opening up the game for Kent, I think he could do exactly the same for Scott Wright. And there's, and I might be completely wrong, and that's why I'm here to get shot down if I'm wrong, but I think we could see potentially a Scott Wright who makes an impact this season. The boy's a good player. You, I mean, you said it yourself there, there's a player in there. There definitely is, but it's getting to the stage where he's, he's, he's running out of time. I think probably it's a, it's a different setup this season, is it not? Yes, yeah, yeah, no, but but that's not neither here nor there. He's still running out of time. This, this, mm. if it doesn't really make a better impact, don't get me wrong, towards the end of the season, um, last season, it, it, it looked pretty good and he came on and, and it, it, it did, it did make an impact. But if it doesn't do it this season, I think he's away. Um, I think he's a, he's a smashing impact player. I think that. He, he kind of fades out of games a fair bit. And it's hard, it's hard for a winger, it's hard for a creative player to always be in the game. But as I said, it's 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 gonna be it's make or break from this season and in hopefully with the likes of Matondo coming in and, and he, he's now properly it looks like that's him and Matondo are, are vying for that position. So hopefully he, he knows exactly what position he's fighting for where he's going to play and how he's going to play and I think that that might bring the best out of him. As I said, as it stands at the minute, he's starting. He's got a starting jersey. So if it does well today, then they can't kind of drop him. Simple as that. So if, if he plays a blind of the day, they can't kind of drop him and, until until such times as it doesn't have a good game. So, and it's just showed you Gio's picking on, on form rather than who he likes and who he doesn't like. So, as I said, the, the, it's up to the boy. He's been here a few years now. He knows the script. He knows the score. He knows what he needs to do to stay in this squad and to be in this team. So, and he just needs to up. I don't even think he's a, a million miles away. I think if he raises his game maybe fifteen percent, I think I think he'll be a great player. Mm -hmm. But it's just finding that fifteen percent consistently. As I said, especially with wingers. Wingers are notorious for being hot and cold mm -hmm. for over the years. So it's just finding that wee bit of consistency to, for him to go on a run and, and, and obviously take it for there. But as I said, it's in his own hands this season. But I think this is his last chance alone. 
it's just a shame that when you talk about wingers, you know, being inconsistent, being hot and cold, great games, poor games. I think it was Brian Loudrop that ruined it for them, wasn't it? I mean, I, I, you're right, aye. I mean, he he just came in and he showed you how to heat. Well, world-class winger right enough, but he ruined it for everybody. Hey, Graham, Scott right on this pitch against this team, against what we're going to come up against. Is this a game that suits Scott right? I think he's good at uh, but kind of pick up the ball and driving, but it's, my problem with Scott Wright has always been his decision-making. Uh, mm -hmm. which, when he gets into the position, he either passes it, doesn't make the correct pass, or holds on to it too long and stuff like that. So, Oh, we've seen glimpses uh, the RB Leipzig game and possibly the Scottish Cup final and stuff like is we've seen glimpses that he can be a player. I think the problem with Scott Wright as well is we know there's a player there, but it's whether he's a starter for Rangers. But Mark says he's, a, he's probably an impact player off the bench. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think today, also I don't really know too much about this new Livingston side, but uh, I think it's one of the games that he can make an impact. And as we said with Lawrence, hopefully it gives him a bit more room and hopefully he takes advantage of that. And just as long as he's playing with confidence, uh, runs, just tries to dribble, get to the byline, put crosses in, because we've got Cholak up front now. So we've actually got a striker where we never had one for a long time last year. So uh, I think I'm looking forward to seeing how he does. And I think if he plays well, then like Mark says, it's his position for Tuesday night and then onwards. Just keep building on that. I know, look, we don't have to speak about Kent, we know Kent. Um, the only thing I will say, Mark, is that <clears throat> going into this season, and we're talking about how Scott Wright has to do more, has to boost his numbers, um, so does Ryan Kent. 100%. Um, Ryan Kent never had a great season, last season. And see, because he's he's a poster boy and we all love him and he costs us millions of pounds, doesn't mean he's no uh, immune to criticism. Um, his levels... The problem was last season it, it was it was decent, but it wasn't the Ryan Kent that we knew and we, we know and, and, and what he can do. We've seen it in bursts and fits. Um I don't know whether it's I don't know what it is. I don't know maybe maybe just after after the big season that we had the season before, maybe it was just a wee bit of a, a, a low. But he needs to step up this season, a hundred percent. And I think that I don't really like to say it, but he knows he's a he knows he's a starter, and I think that for me that's dangerous. No matter who you, are, no matter what team you play for and who you play for, that if you think that I can, I've got to start anyway, even though, though my form's no great. So mm. as I said, it was consistently six and a half to a seven out of ten last season, whereas we know he can be a nine, nine and a half, and a ten sometimes. So this is the difference, but like you said, he needs to get his finger out this season. Mm -hmm. His numbers need to get much better. Um, and I think as well, from it, <coughs> as we've spoken about before, is he's playing against the same players for the last about three, four seasons, and they know what Ryan Kent's going to do. So it's hard, it's hard to, to to do that. Play against players that know exactly that you're going to take a touch and cut inside. So they know that. All I need to do is give me a yard, let him take his touch that he's coming inside. So that's part of the issue as well, I suppose. But as I said, it's up to him. We know he's got a talent. We know he's got a trickery. Mm -hmm. So it's up to him to, to kind of to, to bust through and, and show us that he is that consistent seven and a half, eight out of ten every week, week in, week out, which we know he's more than capable of. The difference between being a good player and a top player is People, when you're a top player, people still know what you're going to do, but yep. they can't stop you. Yep, correct. You know? And I'm, I'm not, obviously, I'm not putting Kent in that bracket of the top, top, top players, but even the really good players, you still can't really stop them, even though you know what they're going to do. And that's well, what Kent has to get himself. Uh, my my point, point is uh, David Cooper. Everybody knew what David Cooper was going to do, but uh, they, yeah. nobody, nobody could touch him when he was <clears> on his game. There's not many David Coopers out there, but as I let's be honest. Um, Kolak, Graham, uh, big game for Kolak. He's the only striker really that we've got. Um, so he was always going to start. And I said last night, I think this game today, I think this is his game. I think this is suited perfectly for him and the way he plays. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him play. Uh, I always managed to see the West Ham game. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing a wee bit more of that kind of performance. Uh, it works very hard, which will help uh, hopefully win the ball back high in their half. 
then we can counter attack as well. So I think he's got it all. He's got the height. Uh, when we've watched the, the clips on YouTube and that, he scores quite a lot of a variety of goals, headers, tappings, all that. So that suits right and Kent. They've got someone to aim for when they get to the byline or early crosses. It suits Tavenier perfectly as well. Mm -hmm. So I think we will see that kind of... That'll be a Rangers goal this year, I think, Tavenier cross uh, for Kovac. So I'm looking forward to seeing how he plays against Livingston. Do you know, I didn't even know this. And, I and I'm... I'm Listen, people on, that watch us and the people that comment are extremely intelligent people and they know their stuff. Um, Alexander Cameron is saying it's a VAR trial today. Does anybody else know that? I didn't know that. I thought it was in the day after Christmas. That's what I thought as well. But if it, I, I don't know 100% if it is, so we won't discuss it, just in case I don't want to, to go into discussing it if it's, if it's not actually. Let's, let's hope it is. I, I, the quicker we get VAR in, I think we all know the better. It should have been today, right enough, if... There's no point bringing him halfway through a season. No, no, mental, mental. Um, Gordon Craig, new member, thank you very much, Gordon, for joining. Um, and if you join as well, you get to see my my intro video that I've done myself. Let's just say I'm no CG Novo. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> really not. Right, Graham, where do Livingston, where can Livingston hurt us today? What do we need to be wary of? Well, we were talking about last night on the phone, and it's quite a but it looks at is a new team, so uh, be quite a lot new to, new to us. The only players I know really is Jason Holt and Andrew Shinney and Nicky Devlin. And I think Brett Pittman, I think he's the big man that plays up front. So uh, I think Pittman and Shinney, if they get link up, uh, that'll be the threat. So as long as we keep uh, tight marking on him, and I think we should be able to play our game. So long balls, set pieces, all that kind of stuff, the usual. Uh, and then on that pitch, obviously over the top, we need to watch out because of for the bounce, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. So as long as uh, we play our game, I think there shouldn't be too much threats. But like I say, set pieces, it's the usual. It's one of the ones, Mark. It's, you want a fast start today, don't you? You don't want to be controlling the game for 15, 20 minutes. Everything's gone rosy. They get a free kick, boom. That's what, you, that's what we do not need today. We need to start fast. No, I think we will start first. I think we need to come out of traps. Um, I think that um, Big Cholak, we we his first league goal, I think I'll, I'll, I'll do it nicely. And then followed by another another three on top of that. I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for that. But yeah, we need, we need to hit the ground running. We need to kind of get and probably stamp, stamp our authority and, and kind of lay down a marker to say, right, this is us. This is your league this year. And nobody's going to be as simple as that. You don't see any danger at all, Mark, coming for Livingston on that pitch. Um, you know, where all their tens of fans, you know, get bearing down on us. <laughs> Look, hey, there are no mugs, and and anybody that kind of kind of writes them off, uh, writes them off at their peril. Um, I think that the the quality in this league kind of gets gets kind of tossed on one side. I think that there's some decent players and. I think a few of the new boys, i.e. Lawrence and maybe Sholak and stuff like that, I'll get a wee bit of fright regarding physicality, pace of the game, and and probably how how half decent some of these players are. Because I, I think it's a bit of a shock when when um, although Sholak's a big big strong boy and stuff like that, I, I, I'll put money in it. He's never been anything as physical as he's going to be in the day. I think that it's going to take him 10, 15 minutes to go hold on a minute here. What is what is going on? So, but. I can't, I can't see it. We should, by rights, be comfortable today. Um, although, as I said, there are no mugs and it can cause you all sorts of issues, especially with this pitch. This pitch is a great leveller because, I mean, I don't even like watching them playing on it, never mind actually physically having to play on it. So, I mean, it's, it's something we've, we've, we've flogged it to death, and it? it should never be allowed in, in our league, um, but professional game, playing in plastic, so... But, um, yeah, look, as I said, we should be comfortable, but caveat again, they're no mugs and they know how to defend. They know how to, they know how to, the, the whole game management and try and hit us in the break or a late, a late, a late corner, a late equaliser. So, as I said, they need to be on their game, but it should be easy, mate. Well, yeah, it's, it's CGM. Look at it this way. Would any of their players get anywhere near our squad? No, we should win. No excuses. 
I mean, I and no, because that's not how football works. No. You know what I mean? But I'm still fully expecting a, a, a comfortable win. Just quickly, Graham, on the bench, McGregor, Jack, Davis, Sands, Fashion Junior, Arfield, King, Divine and Tillman. Not the strongest bench in the world of things aren't going our way. Is that fair? I know we've got a few injuries though. I think that's fair, but it's also an opportunity uh, for... I'm delighted to see Divine and King on the bench. Uh, I think going forward, we will see quite a lot of the, the young players get on the bench. And it's up to the first team to do the business early on so we can get them on and get experience. But like you said, um, t- happy to see Tillman on the bench. I think we'll come off uh, maybe hopefully try and get 20 minutes, half an hour today, if all going well. Uh, Davis, so we know what he's all about, so... I think it's maybe defence and up front we're kind of lacking. Uh, so hopefully we don't need to try and push uh, late on. So we don't need to make the kind of subs try to chase a game. But like you say, it's a wee bit light. And also once the players like Morelos, Roof, uh, Hadji, all the kind of players come back, we will have a strong bench. So we just need to get through this and do the business. The only thing I would look at that bench, Mark, and say is if we are looking for a goal late on, I don't see many goal-scoring options on that bench, or is that unfair? No, I think you're probably right. I think that um, you're, you're probably one Hail Mary's bringing the big boy Tillman on and playing him, playing him through the middle. He said he's played, he's, played, he's played a fair bit through there, and if everything that he needs to believe, um, he's, he, was, he was back up to Lewandowski at uh, Bayern for a bit as well, so... As I say, they can play through the middle. I think that's your only option, but really, realistically, that's that. It's not going to come to that, but because it's going to be comfortable. It's going to be very comfortable. First game of the season. We'll be four nothing up before he comes on. Aye, and then we can change it a bit, a wee bit. But I suppose, actually, you know, Mark, we come into this season wanting to win our title back. Do the people who, and and I don't even want to say the word right, but do the people who won the league the previous season, should they not be the first team to play? I'm, I'm surprised that we are playing the first game of the season. I think it's happened a couple of times. Um, I don't really know why. I, I don't understand it. It's not like anybody's ever done Rangers favours. So <laughs> I really don't know why. I don't know what's happened there. But I think that uh, a couple of, couple of seasons ago, it was the same. I think the, the season before we won 55... Um, I think that was the case. I think the opener was was we were we were first and, and they were second, even although they were champions. But I'm a I'm a traditionalist. I would think that, that the, the the league champions should open open the season with the first game. Because of the Champions League game on Tuesday, the Champions yeah. League qualifier, that's exactly what it is. But Graham, it's a chance to put down a marker and say to everybody, This is we're back, we're yeah, we're refreshed and, and we're ready to go. Exactly. When you look at the, the one when we won 55, we were away at Aberdeen. We had a solid performance and won 1-0. And then we just took off of there. Yep. So that's what we're hoping for today. A good performance, three points, no injuries. And then we can just go into Tuesday and then just build up confidence and fitness. And then once we get players back, we'll be stronger. And then we just keep going. That's what the, the aim should be. That's what the players should be uh, getting told before they get today. Prediction, Graham? A comfortable 2-0 win. I'm not moving until you give me what I want, Graham. <laughs> the first goal scorer, a Lawrence Cracker. A Lawrence Cracker. There we go, Mark. 3-0 Rangers, Sholak first goal. A Sholak first goal. All right, everybody in the comments, very, very quickly, get me in your predictions. And while you're doing that, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Um, if you've watched last night's... Um, phone in, you will have heard the updated news about you know how we're getting um, a lot more access to the B team. Um, I'm, in fact, I'm watching the first half today and then I'm watching the second half in a vehicle and then I am going down to Broadwood to watch um, Cumbernauld Colts versus Rangers B with William Urban. And so we have started the memberships in order to get closer to press access with the club for the first team. So, if you fancy becoming a member, then you can. If you and I, I said last night, I understand the financial circumstances every single person's under because I'm under them myself. So please don't feel obliged to. It's only if you can afford that, and it would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Please give us a like and subscribe as well because the more people that watch on Facebook as well, of course, that always helps, and that's the reason why we are getting um, all this access from the club. Um, right, 
Aldo, 4-1 Lawrence and then a Cholak, Cholak hat trick. There we go. Gallant, I'm not reading it out because you haven't gave me a goal scorer. I'm fed up telling you all. I want a goal scorer. Header, 2-0 Cholak. I, you know, I thought that I thought Paul, Paul had put 3-4 as in that was a score. 3-4-0. No. Lawrence Kent Cholak to score. Um, James not reading it out. Um, Nicholas Moore, 2 0 famous Lawrence. Lawrence seems to be the favourite for the first goal. Um, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Cholak. Um, am I seeing any different scores? 3 0 Kent first goal scorer. Yeah, I would go with that. Gallon. There we go. Lawrence first goal scorer. Malky's hoping for an easy 3-0. We're all hoping for an easy 3-0. But yeah, okay, everybody go and get ready. Run to the pubs, get the, get the game on the TV, get the family put up in the room, lock the door so they can get out, enjoy the game. And of course, we'll be back shortly after the game um, for a post-match reaction, which is going to be a very happy post-match reaction with Stu, Mark and Graham. They're going to enjoy it very, very much because we're going to win 3-4-0. Kent will score first. Mark my words. Um, Stu's first time hosting, so everybody that comes back, please be nice, because I've, from what I'm hearing in the WhatsApp messages I'm getting, he's very, very nervous, and um, he's even talked about wearing a wig, that's how nervous he is, so yeah, so we'll see you all after the game, enjoy the game, and we'll speak to you very, very soon. <laughs>